This is Dave Lawrence from the California Type Foundry, and this is my FontLab 7 series. Hi, so one of the biggest things that separates professional fonts from other fonts is the consistency of the design. And one of the important parts of this is the horizontal consistency and the vertical consistency. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do to get your fonts looking as professional as possible, you want to check your side bearings. These are gonna be the horizontal parts of the space on the each side of the letter. And sometimes it can be negative, but whatever it is, you wanna make sure it's the same. So you have a couple ways you can do that in FontLab. The first way that you can check the side bearings is through the glyph panel in the font window. Let's take a look at how to do that. So open up your glyph panel and you're going to go to window, panels, glyph. So once you have that open, we can click on letters that should have the same sort of sides. So now I used equations and I made each of these equal to H as you can see on the glyph panel. And since I have them clicked, they're all equal to each other. So that's good, those side bearings are consistent. Another way you can do it is also just visually click through and see what the relationship is and how the different formulas change. And you can look at that on the glyph panel. You can also look at it down here. So that's using the glyph panel. A second and bit more obvious way is just to use the metrics window. So let me show you the way that I do that. I don't want to just highlight all of my letters and then press shift option command M, which opens up a met because this is way too much stuff for me to check out. So what I do instead is I highlight the letters that I want to check. Maybe I'm going to check diagonals this time. And so maybe add the K there as well. And then shift option command M. And now we have them all together. So we can check the consistency of that. There's a little bit extra on the W since he's a little bit shallower. So you just look up here and check those things. So this works a little bit better for things that are sort of close, but not all the way going to be the same. Make sure that they're consistent and what you want. Okay, the third way is to check the metrics panel. This one I like because it gives you, you can, if you have a long screen, then this is really nice, watch. Uh, let's go to panels, metrics, click that on. Okay, see, I don't wanna actually attach it to anything, so I'm gonna put it down here and pull it up. So see, that gives me a nice long thing here. This one is great because you can do the LSB or left side bearing, you can organize that up or down, the right side bearing up or down. This is also great for checking the consistency of your, your mono fonts, to make sure all the widths are equal, you can click this here. And if there's any discrepancy, you can find it pretty quickly. So up till now, we've mostly been talking about sans, but if you have a serif font, you can use the measurement line to help get a handle of all your measurements. So what we're gonna do, let's double click into something here. Maybe it's the eye. If I'm at this eye, we have the distance between the side bearing and the serif, but also the side bearing and the stem. So what we can do is go up to view, click view, go down to measurement line. And now this is going to display here. And notice at the bottom for your metrics that it's now displaying the actual distance from the stem. So that can be very useful especially when you have very regular fonts that have sort of the same uh, serif distance and all that. Uh, another thing we can do, double click on this here, and then you can see the measurements in the actual drawing. You wanna make sure that the space between the serifs is consistent, but not only that, you wanna make sure that the space in here from the stem into the edge of the, to the edge of the side bearing, that that's also consistent. 
Now, if you have something irregular like this, where this the each serif is hand drawn, and this is based off of the metal type of Bodoni, you can go to View, go down. Let's turn off the measurement line just for now. Okay, you're going to hold down Shift. Now you're going to go to your top ruler, and if you do not have your top ruler on, let me check. Oh yeah, Command R, View or View to Rulers. Okay, you're going to hold down Shift, pull down from the top, and bring it somewhere in the middle. So our height is 650. So actually, I already have something right about there. Okay, now once you have that, there's one thing you have to do. You have to make sure that your font guides are unlocked. Right now, they're locked. So the way you do that is you go to the View panel. So you're going to click Window, Panels, then View and then unclick the lock button here on the guide. That allows us to change it because when you, what we can do is double click it. And I love this feature. When you double click it here, it's going to show you the how thick the stem is, but also how thick to each side. So you can see that this is, things are a little bit uneven because I wanted to give it that more organic look for this font, but everything is about 108. And since this is a font guide, that guide will pro be propagated to all of these. So you can see that on this side of the J, I made that a lot less because J's do not have as much substance at the uh, the base or the baseline. So that's why that's about 10 less. And so you can go and check through. The K is a little bit more. The L is a little bit more. The M has a little bit less on this side compared to this side. So you can get an idea of how everything is all balanced even when you have a little bit less strict design. So those are two options that you have in order to better see what is actually going on with your serif font. Okay, this next one is what makes fonts look unprofessional. Have you ever used a font where the tops are bumping up and down and things are, don't look consistent and all that? So that's why we need to check the tops and bots. So your vertical positions from top to bottom, your ascender, cap height, X height, and descender. And then hopefully your baselines, are that that's what everything rests on. Your, hopefully your baseline is going to be all correct. So the first way to check that is using zones. And I love this way because this is something that I can check as I am working on the font. So let me show you how to do that. If you don't have your zone set up, this is how you get to, to do that. You're going to go click on I. You're going to click here on zones at the left. And then you're going to set these up. You should have these basic ones, X high descender, cap, base, and descender. Those should be your main ones. And now we want to bring up our view panel because this just looks so cluttered with everything here. It's hard to see this sort of ghosting thing around the nodes. So I'm going to click on my B view. If you have your B view set up, you can do that. If not, you can set it up by clicking the I and that will hide most of everything there. Okay, so the things you want to have on, on the B view is your zones and you also want to have your nodes on. And so with that on, you can see that nodes that appear at the edge of the zone, those are going to have a gray circle around it. And ones that are inside the zone, those are going to have a gray square. So see, watch, if I move this down, well, actually, let's move it up. See that change now to a square. If I move it back down, we're a circle, and now it disappeared. So we know, so if, you, if you're looking through your font and you see this, you know that it, this part is too low. So if you have something with, the, with cupping like this, then the node in the middle, the lowest node should be at the edge of the zone and the other one should be up. And that tells the computer how to push those things down. So that would be the first way to check the vertical metrics. Okay, the next one is the font window. You can use this to check your vertical metrics. 
Um, I'm sort of embarrassed to say that I did not find this one sooner. It could have saved me a lot of time on a lot of fonts and characters. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. You're going to go into your font window inside your font. You're going to... So you can be in encoding. This part doesn't really matter as much, and you just hit the X here. Okay, but what you want to do is you want to change the name to either top or bottom. So if we're doing top, then that's going to check the top of each letter or character. Now on the Unicode, uh, instead of this thing, we want to organize it according to top. So now everything is organized. And it, what's nice is FontLab even sort of color codes it going from the red, which is the lowest stuff, to the purple, which is the tallest stuff in your font. So I can just keep going down here. But this is a way that you can visually check where everything is. But even more than the last method, I like using the font list. And let me show you how to get to that. It's also in the font window. And what you do is you're gonna click this part here, show hide list of glyphs in the font. Okay, uh, you're gonna click on the gearbox. If this sync with cell caption, that might be on and it's gonna show up like this. So take that off if that's on. You want to include the glyph name in there. And if you want to, you can include the left and right side bearing, but you also wanna include the bounding box top and bottom. So I push okay. And so look, this has all of our stuff that we can check everything from everything we talked about in this video. So this is one of my favorites. You can organize anything however you want to. And if you only want to use, be looking at a subset of your font, then just choose that subset over here and you see that it hides everything else, it only shows those guys. Great way to check your consistency. Okay, so that about wraps it up for this video. I hope that you found it interesting. I hope that you find these tips useful when you get your font more consistent, it is going to help it look more professional. So right now I've been making these videos and I need your help to figure out what type of content I should post next. So please leave your comment below. Let me know what do you need in your journey through Font Lab and through designing fonts. What would be the most helpful to you? Also, I would really appreciate it. Please smash the like button. That's going to help me out a lot. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks so much.